And we're back here on KFY All Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. And it is Thursday. It is 735. It's time for the car pro, Jerry Reynolds on line one. Good morning, Jerry. Well, hello, fellas. Good morning. Jerry, are your feathers, are they dry this morning? <laughs> yes, only because I haven't been outside yet. <laughs> I was looking at radar. It said there was a, we- a a flood warning in Dallas, and I looked at radar, and, geez, you, you guys had a huge rainstorm that moved through there. It looks like it's about over now, huh? Yeah, it's about quit now, but, man, it, uh, I'm hard to wake up in the middle of the night, but it broke, it, that woke me up. <laughs> it was it was really raining. I thought it was hailing for a minute, but I think it was just uh, really hard rain, and you guys are chilly. Woo. Well, I yep. see that you're 20. driving a 2019 Lincoln Nautilus this week. Boy, you, you you you've been driving in style lately. Yeah, I have. I uh I had a new Ram uh half ton Laramie last week and the week before that I had a GMC uh Sierra Denali, which was a nice pickup, also a half, half ton. It's good to, it was good to have those back to back to see what the differences were. Uh, just amazing to me. Both of them were well equipped trucks and both of them were approaching seventy thousand dollars for a half ton gasoline truck. You know, you look at that and you just go, "Wow, where, no. where does this end?" What does you this know? Nautilus cost? What does it run? This Nautilus is sixty seven thousand, and it doesn't have a third row seat. Mm. Uh, nice, nice SUV, though I got to say, uh, love the way it performs. It's got the two point seven liter EcoBoost, so it's got a turbo. Uh, gas mileage is 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 good so far. From what I can tell, it's rated, actually, at 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. But feels like it's getting a little bit better than that in town, and I'm checking it as we go. But <clears throat> really well-equipped really well equipped SUV. Uh, this took the place of the MKX, uh, which had been around for a while. And thank goodness Lincoln's going back to real names instead of just letters because it's driving me crazy. With all their uh, MK this and MK that, but this is a this is a nice rig. This is called the Black Label Edition, and what you get with the Black Label is you get a, a four year fifty thousand mile of all your maintenance paid, uh, pickup and delivery anytime you need service. You can get your car washed at the dealership anytime you want to. Uh, you get a, a full detail once a year, and there's some other little perks: uh, concierge type service. So that's what the black label is called. But but a nice, but a really nice, uh, really nice luxury SUV. It will compete nicely with uh, some of the Lexus models and some of the even some of the Mercedes models that are out there. Yeah, I mean it, it looks it looks nice. It is. I mean, it's really 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 drives good. It's quiet inside. Uh, the seats are just beautiful. Uh, but the big news today, we're waiting to see, and we'll know late today. We're waiting for all the manufacturers to start reporting sales numbers for 2018. So we're going to figure out how the industry did in 2018 versus 2017. I think the news will be good, actually. I think I think sales will be very close to last year. Uh, Which was it, a record year. That. Yeah, right. It was. And so if you can even just stay close, you know, you're you're doing fine. Back 10 years ago, Anytime we sold 15 million cars in a year, uh, everybody was just super happy. And today, I mean, we've done 17 million for five years in a row, which is almost unbelievable. And we'll see what 2019 holds. Yeah. Well, no. with uh, with this move to, uh, I guess, SUVs, which are a little more expensive, um, is it? I mean, do you see it getting higher? You know, I don't. I, I, yeah. The auto industry is cyclical, and one of the reasons that it is is because people go through phases of getting new cars, and then they keep them 10 years or, or so, and that cycle has shortened over time. And and we've got more leasing going on today than ever before. Uh, we're approaching 40% of leasing. Uh, 40% of the people that buy a car in, in 2018 leased it. Well, so sure. they're going to be back in the market in three years. Uh, I would be interested to know. How uh, I know that from my own experience. I mean, I used to trade cars every two or three years, and yeah. now um, I've got two cars that are over ten years old, and and I'm still driving them. Yep, 
and don't have any plans to buy another one. I wonder, is that just because of my age, or is that is that a trend? Well, I think there is a trend. I mean, the average age of car on the road today in America is still more than 11 years old. Uh, so average there is age? A lot, yes, the well. average age. So there's, you know, there's some cars out there that are 20 years old. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, people are keeping cars longer in some cases because they're lasting longer. Well, and, I think that's that's the truth. You know, used to, like when I was uh, a young man, a car wouldn't last 10 years. Oh, no, no. I, I mean, it used to be 100,000 miles. If you made that, you were doing great. Yeah. Uh, you had a really good car, but, but, but those days are gone, and, and yet there are people who like to trade every two to three years, and I think that's primarily your least crowd. But then some people who purchase their cars, when they see something new, it gets you know it just gets in their blood and they got to trade. Yeah. But there's a lot of added value to uh, used vehicles that way as well, right? Oh, no question about it. Uh, the, use, the used business last year, pretty much across the board, was very, very good. And it's a little uncommon to have the new car business and the used car business so good at the same time. Well, that, so, I know that, that, that well. Typically happens. So, yeah. Jerry, you used to you used to own dealerships. Um, is uh, is the used car uh, area is that where most dealerships make their money? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's other areas of the dealership. It's it's not the new car department, and that's what everybody thinks. In fact, most dealerships, unless it's you know, unless it's a luxury store like a Lexus or Mercedes dealership, most of them actually lose money selling new cars, but they don't care because used cars is so good, and every new car sale fuels the service department and the parts department and the body shop and the finance department. Every department in the dealership makes good money except new cars, and new cars are kind of a necessary evil. You just have to sell them, and it's so competitive. It's just impossible to make money on them again unless you're in some of the luxury lines. Yeah. Okay, Jerry. I I had an incident occur to me in my Highlander uh, last week, and I and I thought at the time I wanted to ask you about this. But yeah. I got I got rear-ended in my uh, Highlander. Oh. And I, it was hard. It was it hit hard, and I got out, and I was just dreading to go see how how much damage there was. There was none. Oh so wow! That tells me that that. That design, uh, it didn't bend. It, um, I don't, I don't know what. How, how are they designing the, these things not to to get damage on them? Do you have a trailer hitch? No, no. And it it, it hit the bumper. Did it, did the other car go under the bumper? No, uh, but the uh, the the other car was damaged. But I mean, it was. I took a I took a hard hit. Yeah. And well, I, I don't know how it kept from from, uh, but there was no damage. There was nothing but his uh, imprint of his Mercedes emblem on my the rubber part of my bumper. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, all that's there. I, I mean, typically you'll get you'll get some bumper damage on a pretty hard hit like that. You know, there shouldn't be any you know any structural damage of any kind. And, and I mean, the Highlander's a great SUV. I mean, they're tough. They they're built for that. Well, um, I just wondered if they are building them where, where they give instead of bend or something. They do. Oh, yeah. That the bumper's got some shocks that it'll it'll take a hit and spring back. Mm. Uh, you know, of course, everything's got its limits. It depends on how sure. hard you get sure. it. Right. But man, I, that's exciting news, man. I I think that's cool. Uh, the, I've, I've had some pretty good hits from behind too, and it always did damage. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jerry, we're running uh, low on time, but uh, what do you have going on on CarProUSA dot com? Well, we got uh, we'll have the sales numbers up later today. Uh, I had my top automotive stories of 2018, which is something that I do, and we've got two big collector car uh, auctions coming up. Uh, just within the uh, Nikum starts today, and then Barry Jackson starts next week. Both of those out in Florida, and by next Tuesday, we will have a completely new website up. And I think you guys are going to love it. Oh, wow. It's still going to be at carprousa.com, yeah. though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's just going to be a completely different look, and, and it's going to be quicker and faster and a little easier to read and easier to find things. Uh, so we're, we're, we've are we been working on that for months and just about to get it turned back on. All right. Well, uh, Jerry Reynolds is the car pro. He's on from 11 to 1 every Saturday here on 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. And uh, 
We'll see you Saturday, Jerry. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.